Last time we set up our SQLite database, but before that we had created our cell stock service. So now it's finally time to set up a view model and view so that the user can sell stocks. So right now clicking on the cell tab does nothing because we have not implemented any of that. So let's get started. Let's start off by creating our cell view model in our view models folder. So the cell view model and of course this will extend view model base and we'll come back to implementing this in just a little bit but for now let's add our cell view in our views folder just a user control call it cell view and let's just throw a placeholder text block in there we'll say cell and we'll implement the rest of this later so now we need to map that view model to our view and that's all done in our app.xaml using data templates so we'll just duplicate our by view model template and change that to the cell view model and we're going to map the cell view model to the cell view and now to navigate to this view model in view we're going to have to update our navigation bar so the last tab we have here is our cell radio button so i'm just going to copy what we have for the by radio button and paste it down here and i just want to apologize real quick for what seems like jumping around it's actually my formatting on save using the xaml styler visual studio extension so hopefully that's not too distracting but anyways let's update this radio button so we're going to use our update current view model command but this time the view type is going to be cell which we don't actually have implemented yet so we have that enum in our i navigator so we'll have another one for cell and this radio button is going to show up as checked if our current view model is the cell view model which we have created so that should be everything our navigation bar needs to support going to the cell page but let's go to that update current view model command and that's in our main view model so this command is an update current view model command of course so let's go to that and to set the current view model on our navigator we use our view model factory and create a view model for our view type which is going to be our new cell type that we just added so that means this create view model method on our view model factory which we have right here needs to support the cell view type so let's add that and we're pretty much going to do the same thing that we've done for our, all of our view models so we are going to inject a create view model for a cell view model so we'll update that field name and add that to the constructor so this is a delegate that gives us back a cell view model so call that method and that'll give us back a cell view model and then our navigator current view model will be the cell view model and then we'll display the cell view but of course we do need to register a create view model delegate for a cell view model in our app.xaml.cs. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just going to copy the by view model create view model and change that for our cell view model. And that create view model delegate is going to get the cell view model that we have registered in our container. So we haven't registered a cell view model yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do it right underneath the by view model registration and change that to cell view model. So it will be a singleton which means when you switch in between pages it's going to be the same cell view model instance. So here we go, click cell, and there we go. There is our cell page that we are now ready to implement. So let's begin with the cell view model. So what I expect for this view model is there's going to be a list of the user's assets. So to get those, we can actually use our asset listing view model that we've used in previous episodes. And we'll set that up in the constructor. So we can instantiate it here, and that's going to need an asset store, actually. So let's go ahead and get that through our constructor which we can do because it's all registered in our dependency injection container. So on this asset listing view model, we have a collection of the user's assets. So I'm going to put all these assets into a combo box on the view, and the user is going to be able to select the asset view model that they want to sell. So on our sell view model, we're going to have a property, which is going to be the asset view model, and this will be the selected asset. So this is going to be the asset that the user wants to sell. So one issue we kind of have is whenever the user changes the selected asset in the combo box, we're going to want to call the financial prep API to get information about that stock that they want to sell. So the information we need is the same information that our search symbol command gets us. And in fact, that's actually just the stock price. That's all the information we need for the asset that they want to sell. But that said, I want to reuse the search symbol command in my cell view model. So I will have a property for that command. And we'll call that the search symbol command. And then of course, when everything's all said and done, we're going to need a command to actually sell the stock. So we'll call that the sell stock command, and we still need to implement one of those in our commands. So let's set up our search symbol command. So we're just going to initialize that right here. We'll instantiate a new search symbol command. And if we take a look at this constructor, 
it takes a buy view model. Now obviously we don't have a buy view model because we're a sell view model. So that's a little bit of an issue, we'll get to that in a second. But we do need a stock price service and that's no big deal because we can get that through our constructor. So let's just generate a parameter for that real quick. And what about this buy view model? Well if we go look at our search symbol command and take a look at what it does to the buy view model. So it gets a symbol from the view model, it sets the search result symbol and the stock price on the view model and it also can set an error message on the view model. So what we can do in order to make this command work for the buy view model and the sell view model is we could have our buy and sell view models implement some kind of interface that supports getting a symbol and setting an error message and all of the stuff that the command does to the view model and then we could simply implement that interface on our buy and sell view models and depend on that interface in this command. So rather than talk about it, let's go ahead and implement it. So I'm going to go into my buy view model and I'm going to extract an interface out of this. Now I'm not going to call this the I buy view model because my search view model is also going to implement this interface. And the main goal of this interface is to support the search symbol command. So I'm going to call this actually the I search symbol view model. And we're not going to put all of these properties onto the interface. We're only going to select what the search symbol command needs in order to interact with the view model. So in our case, let's just deselect everything. And we know our search symbol command needs an error message to set. It needs to get a symbol. It sets a search result symbol. And it also sets a stock price. So that's all we need on this interface. Let's go ahead and create that. And in fact, to make this a little bit stricter, we actually do not need a getter on the stock price. We're on the search result symbol. And we don't need a setter on the symbol either. So this is literally the bare minimum for our search symbol command to work. So now instead of using a buy view model here, we can use an I search symbol view model, and then we can implement this interface on our sell view model. So the I search symbol view model, and instead of just implementing the interface, I'm just going to copy over the properties from the buy view model because otherwise it's not going to scaffold out everything with like the property change that we're going to need anyways. So we'll snag the stock price, search result symbol, and the symbol properties copy those into our cell view model. You could even consider making some kind of base class if you wanted to reduce even more duplication with these properties, but I am going to keep it simple here. And then we also need an error message too. So I'm just going to copy over all the status message and error message view model properties here and drop those in the cell view model. And before we forget, we also have to instantiate these message view models too. So instantiate the error message view model and the status message view model. So now we're back looking at our command, which now takes an I search symbol view model, and we can just pass that in as ourselves because our cell view model implements the interface that we need. And this is really the big reason why I love to put my commands in their own files so that you can depend on interfaces like this. And now I can reuse the same exact command in completely different view models. Whereas if I were to do some kind of delegate command, I'd have the command implementation in the actual view model. And it might be a little bit more work to reuse that delegate command and all of that logic in multiple view models. So this is pretty exciting, very easy to reuse, and now we can continue implementing our cell view model. So I think the last thing I need is just a way for the user to specify how many shares they want to sell. So that's just going to be an integer property, shares to sell. And if we're going to specify the shares to sell, then we're also going to have a property similar to the total price on our buy view model, where we calculate the price by multiplying the shares to sell times the price of the stock. So we'll create that property here, total price, and multiply our shares to sell and our stock price. And since we're depending on the shares to sell for this calculated property, we're going to have to raise an on property changed for the total price whenever the shares to sell changes. So I'm feeling pretty good about our sell view model. I think the only thing we need is our sell stock command. So we'll come back to that later and implement that. But for now, let's get going on the sell view. And I'm going to open the buy view as well because I expect these to be pretty similar. Actually, maybe not, but I do want to reuse this margin. So our margin for our grid is going to be 20. And then we'll get some row definitions going in here. Start off with three rows. Might need more than that. So first thing we need is our combo box that the user is going to use to change their selected asset in their asset listing. So it's going to go in the first row, row zero. The item source is going to be a binding to our asset listing view model. And on that view model, we have our collection of assets. We're going to bind the selected item 
to our selected asset property, so we can track that on the view model. And then whenever that selected item changes, we want to execute our search symbol command. So I could just execute this in the setter for my selected asset, but I actually don't want to do that. I like my setters to be pretty simple. So instead, on my combo box, I'm going to bind my search symbol command to the selection changed command. And ooh, there is not a selection changed command. This is a big problem, but we know how to solve this. I do this all the time. What we're going to do instead is create an event handler for that. And before I do that, it's going to generate it with combo box selection changed as a name. But if I give this a name of CB assets, so combo box assets, and then try and generate this again, it'll actually use CB assets as the name of the event handler, which is now in our code behind. And now inside this handler, I can execute my search symbol command. So I see people do something like this all the time. They'll take the data context, cast it to whatever their view model is, the cell view model, and then literally grab the command property and call it. But I really do not like to do that because that means this cell view is always going to be tied to your cell view model. And you might think that's okay until you find out some other view model wants to bind to your cell view. And you might tell me, no, I know the cell view model is going to be the only view model for the cell view. And that might be the case. But either way, casting your data context to the view model is a lot harder and a lot messier than using a dependency property like this. So built in WPF feature, we can have a dependency property for an I command. We can call this the selected asset changed command. The owner class will be the cell view and the default value will be null. So let me clean this up. I don't know why this snippet is so disgusting. So there we go. Now we have a selected asset changed command and we can execute that command here in our event handler. So just call it execute. We'll pass in null as the parameter. And just in case the selected asset changed command is null, you can simply put a question mark before calling execute so that if the command is null, you're not going to get some kind of null reference exception. So now we can simply bind the search symbol command to our selected asset changed command. And where do we do that? Do we do it in the cell view? Can I like set the dependency property up here? No, I can't obviously because this is a user control. So we actually have to set up that dependency property in our app.xaml. So here we have a cell view, which is where we just set up that dependency property. And on the cell view, there is our dependency property. And we can bind our search symbol command to that dependency property. And this is nice. We actually get IntelliSense here because it knows our cell view model data type. So there we go. Just select that. And there we go. Now our selection changed is pretty much a selection changed command. Now we also need to set up a data template for the items inside of our combo box so that our combo box actually knows how to display an asset view model. So we can do that with the item template and define a data template in here. And we're just gonna have a horizontal stack panel and we'll have a text block for the asset view model symbol. So I think that's what I called the property. Yep, there we go. So we have symbol and shares properties on our asset view models. So that said, we'll also have a text block for the shares. And between these, we'll just have a vertical line that we'll display as a border. And we'll give it a black brush and a border thickness. We'll just give it one pixel on one of the vertical sides. And that should be good enough for now. We'll see how that looks. So now after that combo box, I want to display, I think my status messages and my error messages. So for that, I'm just going to copy that over from the by view. And we're also going to need this converter. So we have that in our by view as well. We can just grab that resources definition. There we go, paste that for our user control. And now last but not least, this is where I expect similarities between the cell view and the by view. So I have this grid here, and this is just our two panel grid. So on the left, we share the stock information, and on the right side, we have all the price calculation and then the button to actually buy the stock. So I wanna reuse a lot of this in my cell view. And I could just copy it and paste it over, but actually, I don't want to duplicate this because this is pretty complicated layout stuff. Like we have a max width here, we got borders, all that. It'd be a lot to copy that and then maintain it in two places. So I actually want to create a custom panel that I can reuse in both views. So we can put that in our controls folder and I'll call this the search symbol result panel. And it's going to be a user control. So just a generic name that's going to work for our by view and our cell view. And now we got this user control, so I'm going to come into the by view and just move this entire thing into the user control. So I actually just cut it out and paste it in here. And then back in the by view, let's use this control. So the search symbol result panel, we'll have to import that. 
So you get the controls namespace in here. And then I'm going to move the grid and the margin stuff into the by view because these properties are specific to this grid and this layout. And then in my cell view, I'm also going to use this panel. So we'll come in here and drop that in there. I'm going to have to import the namespace. And actually, I think I want these rows and this margin to be the same here as well. So if you didn't realize already, we have a pretty big issue here. So the left side of the panel is good. All we display here is the search symbol and the price of the stock. But then on the right side of the panel, we have stuff like shares to buy. And then we have the buy stock command and the buy button. And all of that content is specific to the buy view. So what we can do is have the buy view pass in all of this content so we can cut it out and then set that as the internal content of the search symbol result panel. And then we can copy this content and use it in our sell view, but change all of the buy stuff to sell stuff. So the shares to sell, bind to that property. And then we're gonna execute the sell stock command and the sell button is going to display sell instead of buy. So we're reusing the panel and all of the layout logic, but each view can pass in different things to support either buying or selling a stock, which is exactly what we need. And we do have a bit of duplication within these stack panels, and there are ways that we could cut that down more, but I'm still feeling good about where we're at right now. So now how is this panel going to use that content that we pass in? Well, the user control actually has a property for content. And that's obvious because, as you can see in this panel, we have the content right here. We're actually setting the content. But we're also setting the content when we pass in these stack panels in the buy and sell view. So just to prove that, if I go to the buy view, as you can see, we set this stack panel as the content. So it pretty much overwrites the content that we have within this user control. And that's not what we want. We want the user control to use the content that we passed in. So the best way to do that is to not have all of our layout stuff actually defined as the content for our search symbol result panel user control. Instead, we can set it as the user control template. So we can set this template property and inside here, we can have a control template. I think we also need to specify the target type. Let's go ahead and do that, user control. And then we can move all of this into the control template. And now inside of this border, where we actually want the buy view and the sell view content that gets passed into display, we can use a content control and set the content. And since we're now in a control template, we can do a template binding and get the content. And this content is going to be what gets passed within our custom control in the buy and sell views. So now if we look at this again, go to buy, we'll do a search, and there we go. Everything works perfectly. And let's actually check out our sell view. So one thing we have is that this is way too long. Let's set a width on this. We'll go for 300. And then looks like we need a little bit of margin on this border. So we'll do margin 10 on the left and right. There we go. That looks better. So we can select this. And we get symbol does not exist. So if we go to our cell view model. Oh, I don't think we ever set this symbol. And that's because we shouldn't be setting the symbol. Because the symbol that we want to search for is going to depend on the selected asset. So instead of having this getter and setter for the symbol, we're just going to have a getter that uses the selected asset and grabs that symbol. And of course, selected asset could be null, so let's add a question mark there. So now I'll select this stock again, and there we go. Now it does the search. So almost done. Really, all we have left is implementing our sell stock command. So we added a sell stock command in our commands folder, extending async command base. So we're going to have to access our cell view model. We're also finally going to use our cell stock service. So let's generate a constructor for that. And I actually expect this to be pretty similar to the buy stock command. So just to scaffold this out, I'm just going to copy all of this and paste that in here. I'm going to have to make this async. Change buy view model to our cell view model instance. Use our cell stock service to sell a stock. And we're going to need our current account. So we are going to need our account store here as well. So another field for the I account store, we'll add that to the constructor. And there we go, now we can grab the current account. And instead of shares to buy, we have shares to sell. And then I think we have different exceptions. We should still get the invalid symbol exception, so we can reuse all of that. And actually, I think we documented them. Yes, we documented them on the sell stock method. So there we go, invalid symbol exception, regular exception, and now insufficient shares exception. So let's change that. And we gotta update all these messages, so successfully sold the shares. 
and now account has insufficient shares and I think we get the required shares on this exception so if we look at this exception there we go required shares so we can do a pretty advanced error message here you only have and then pass in the shares that they have from that exception so you only have X amount of shares great so let's set up this command on our view model so a new cell stock command pass in the cell view model we're gonna need the cell stock service we can get that in the constructor and the account store so let's add these to the constructor clean this up a little bit and we should be ready to sell some stocks so we'll select T sell three shares there we go and a couple issues here we get symbol does not exist and we also have some overlapping here so what's up with the overlapping uh, we're just missing a row definition there we go problem solved there but we get symbol does not exist so what's happening is we set the current account on the account store and then when we do that it raises state changed now the asset store subscribes to state changed and raises its own state changed and then the asset listing view model subscribes to state changed and whenever the state changes on the asset store we reset the assets and that's going to clear our collection of asset view models and our combo box in the cell view is binding to those assets so what happens is the selected asset gets set to null because we have a new collection of assets that we need to select from and when that happens it calls selection changed and our selected asset changed command gets called the search symbol command executes and grabs the view model symbol but that view model symbol on the cell view model is going to be null if the selected asset is null and null is definitely an invalid symbol so I think the approach I'm going to take to this is if the selected item in our combo box is null then we're not going to execute this command oh well I messed up this if statement if the selected item does not equal null then we're going to execute it so there we go we will sell one share and there we go so it doesn't re-execute the search symbol command and we don't get an error message and now since this is null the selected item I feel like we should clear this search result panel and go back to hiding it so we can do that after we sell the stock so once the stock is sold we can set the search result symbol to string.empty so now we sell and there we go it hides it when we're done which is good because we actually sold our last share and we have nothing else to sell so it would be bad if that was still visible and we could sell again. But yeah, this is pretty cool. So we can buy, we can sell, everything is very reactive. As in everything updates, so we can sell one, go to our portfolio, we have one share. And I'm pretty satisfied with the progress so far. So good progress, implemented the sell view model, and we added our search symbol view model interface. So we can use our sell view model and our buy view model for the search symbol command. We now depend on this interface. We also added a sell stock command using our sell stock service. And then we added a view for this view model where I demonstrated how you can execute a command via an event handler very cleanly using a dependency property for the command. And last but not least, we also created the search symbol result panel. So we didn't duplicate a bunch of layout logic between our sell view and our buy view. And that is where we're going to wrap up. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you and stay tuned.